Hello and welcome. I'm very happy to see you. Okay, don't worry, don't cut it. Hello and welcome. I'm glad to do this because this is going to help us. It's going to help you if you pay attention from the beginning to the end. And if you've not seen my previous videos on physics, go and watch all of them because this is a kind of continuation. So I have decided to avoid some of the things I explained very well in those ones. So that having watched those ones, the first, the second, the third, and now this one, you'll be more sure of high score. So go and review those videos. You are going to succeed. Those of you that have done the exam, fine. Those that are here to do it, you are going to have good grades. Please, don't stop studying. Alright, so let's look at these questions. Here we have 8. I may have to add 2 or 3 as the case may be. So I may have to add some other questions as the case may be, depending on the time we have. So now, if you look at something like this now, if you look at the whole of these questions, if you're able to answer all these questions, it means invariably we have attempted many questions, not just 8. Because in each question, I'm going to explain and give you additional information. So to make it like 4 questions answered. So let's... Okay, unfortunately, we don't have enough space today. So I'm trying, we are going to see how we can manage our board. So see number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. I think we may have to start with this one. If we're able to answer this question, we clean. Answer this one, clean. Then it creates space for us to do all these other ones. All right. So let's look at this number three question. An example of mechanical wave is mechanical, mechanical wave, water waves, radio waves, x-rays, light rays. This, these three are not mechanical waves. They are under electromagnetic. So these ones do not require a material medium for their propagation. They don't, they don't require material medium. Well, this one requires material medium. So it's a mechanical wave. A me mechanical wave is a wave that requires material medium. Eh? A, a wave generated by what? A guitar. If you strike a guitar, a string of a guitar, it's also mechanical wave and all those other ones. A mechanical wave can be what? Transverse or what? Longitudinal. Please, I want you to go and just give us the definition of this. Today is assignment, first assignment. So this one has crests and drops. That is forming wavelength. This one has compression and the what? Refraction. Compression. I don't know, we don't have, we don't have space here. We don't have space today, so we are managing our board. Please try to see it, oh yeah? Now, so this one is up. So the answer is mecha water waves, mechanical waves. So these ones are not, these ones are electromagnetic. So permit me to clean the board now, like this, so that we can have space to solve the next question very quickly. We don't have enough time, because I have a lot of other things to attend to. All right, so now, okay, so now we continue. The linear expansivity alpha and the cubic expansivity uh, gamma of a material are related by what equation? So now you know that generally linear expansivity is increase, defined as increase in length, increase in length per unit length. Per, per degree rise in temperature that is linear 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 expansivity so but area expansivity is defined as increase in instead of length now increase in area per unit area per degree rise in temperature per cubic expansivity or call it volume expansivity increase in volume per unit volume per degree rise in temperature so now, this is linear, this is area, this is cubic. Linear, area. You know, generally, area is length times breadth. And cubic, length times breadth times height. So now, the relationship, this one is just ordinary length. See it? So in dimension, dimension-wise, this is L, L, this is L, L, L. That is L raised to the power 3. This is L raised to the power 2. This is L, which means area expansivity, which is noted like this, is what? 2 times alpha, then the uh, cubic expansivity is what? 3 alpha. Three alpha. So the relationship between uh, linear expansivity and cubic expansivity is this. Cubic expansivity is called what? 3 alpha. Area expansivity. So if the question is, what is the relationship between area expansivity, linear expansivity and area expansivity? What is the answer? 
uh, area expansivity equal to 2 times what? Linear expansivity. In form, if linear expansivity is 10, then area expansivity is 2 times 10, uh, 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 20. So that's how to solve something like this. It's not difficult. So go and check again for the formula. We cannot do everything for you. I only, I'm only here to guide you, to direct you. Then if you want to do more, go and check some of the textbooks. Uh, I don't want to mention anyone for now because they are not paying for adverts. So there are very good ones. If you need any good one, you can ask me directly. Some of you have my phone number already. Just go and check our first videos. I put my phone numbers there, but now I decided not because I'm having a lot of requests that these days my phone does not even have time to, I don't have time to do other things. It keeps coming and I have to attend to all of them. Because if I do one, it's not good. Even sometimes in the midnight, messages have been coming in. Alright, the length of a period of a simple pendulum is increased by a factor of 4. By what factor is the period increased? So we have, we're having enough, a more space now. Alright, now look at it. The period for a simple pendulum, the period, uh, okay, pendulum, the period and the, the length are related by this. Look at it. The period is directly proportional to length. That means the period has to do with time. It takes it to complete a cycle. Frequency is number of cycle. Period has to do with time. So now it's proportional to the square root of the length. If it is long, it takes more more time. If it is short, it takes short time for it to uh, make a, a frequency. So this is the relationship between the two of them. Now there's ordinarily when you have something like this, just like a boy a, a child's law, v1 over t1 equal to v2 over t2. This is just like because the, the, the volume is directly proportional to what? The temperature. That is it. So it comes in this form. Uh -huh. So we can still do it V1 over V2 equal to T1 over T2. This times this. You can see, look at it. This and this. So they are still like in the same form. So this, this and this, this and this. So they are still like in the same form. So we can still do it like this. V1, V2, this cross multiply plus with this. Eh? This cross multiplies with it. This is it. T1, V2. T1, V2. T2, V1. T2, V1. So we can still do the same here. Time period 1 over period 2. Equal to. Now, to remove this thing, just if you put it like this, this is it. Or you say the period is proportional to the square root of the length. The period equal to K root L. Variation. Direct variation. Know how to do it. So T over. Okay, K, K equal to what? The T period over what? Square root of the length. If you still apply it, it's still like the same thing this way. So let's do it like this. Like this. Now, T1 over T2 is equal to what? Now, look at it. Okay, let me put it like this. Square root of L1 over square root of L2. But, let me clean this please. But it is said, it is said here that, it is said here that, by a factor of 4, the, the length is increased by a factor of 4, which means L2 is 4 times L1. This L2 is 4 times L1 because it's increased by a factor of 4. This L1 is increased by, by 4. So this second length is 4 times L1 because it is increased by 4. So you can have T1 over T2 is equal to square root of L1 over square root of what? 4L1. I hope we are getting it. I hope the space is not, it's not getting too tiny. So square root of 4L1. If we now uh, look at this now, we have, we have T1 over T2 equal to square root of L1 over 4L1. So this can cancel this. This is 1. So square root of 4 is 2. T1 over T2 equal to 1 over 2. So if we cross multiply, this times this, is what 2t1 is equal to t2 so look at it the answer is 2 so look at it so t2 is equal to 2t1 so t1 is multiplied by 2 that's it so this is the answer so if the pendulum if t1 is 50 t2 will be 2 times 50 that is 100 2 times 50 that is 100 so if you are if you like that question has options the option there the answer is what 2 by what factor is the period increased this same period by what factor? The length of period or period of a so the, this same period is increased by what? 2. By what factor? 
So it is increased by what? Increased by what? By two. Not four, not eight, not five pi, not three pi, as given in the options. Okay. All right, so I can clean the board now. All right. All right, we may look at other formula there, but there's no time. All right, let me clean it up to this point so that we can have enough space to keep solving. Now, Look at this one again, period. The period of a 10 kilohertz radio wave traveling at 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second is what? I decided not to give you the options in today's questions. So that at least when you have it like this, you try to solve it. When you solve, you see if you can get it. So I decided to skip the options so that we can have enough space on our board today. Now, this is the speed of sound in air. So this 10 kilohertz frequency, the period of so now this is frequencies. This is a very simple question because it is period. You know the relationship. This is frequency. Frequency is equal to okay. Period. Period T is one over frequency. The same thing. Frequency is one over the period. The pass of period. So now this is speed of sound in air. But you are asked of the period. Just the period. So we are not making use of this. We are not making use of. It's not all the things. All the. Uh, uh, let me just say, all, it's not numbers given to you in every uh, objective question that is useful. Like this very one, there is no need for this one. You can only use this one when we proceed to something like wavelength. Uh, uh, wavelength. Frequency times wavelength. Frequency is there. If you want to find wavelength here, you use this one. I think there is a question that involves wavelength. Or if not this one, I will give you one that involves But we have done something like this in our previous videos. If like the period of a list of a, 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 a is if like you are given that the frequency is this and the wave, uh, this is the wave speed, then you can find wavelength. Wavelength is equal to V over frequency. That is this divided by this. You get your answer. But what we are looking for is period. So we are not using this. So it's not everything given to you that you must make use of. So as soon as you say, ah, you multiply this by this. No, learn this now. Very, very important. So now what we are going to do is just period is 1 over the frequency. Look at this. Kilo high. Kilo hertz. So this kilo is... 10 raised to the power 3. So 10 times 10 raised to the power 3. So making it period is equal to 1 over 10 raised to the power 3. And this one make it 4. So make it standard form. 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 seconds. 1.0. Let's just put it like this. 1.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 4. When this one is coming up. 1.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 4. In this is. So this is the answer. Very, very simple. These are the kind of questions you will see. Because it's CBT, so they will not give you questions that will require a uh, long uh, calculation and all those things. So just be very, very careful with what you are doing. Let's clean this. We are having more space now to solve our questions. This is very, very good. All right. So, all right. So we come again. The period of, okay, we have done this one so I can clean it. All right. All right. So now we look at the next one. So a lamp is rated. 240 volts 60 watts determine the resistance of the lamp when lit so you want to know the resistance of the lamp when lit when it is on what is the resistance hmm? so this will also help you if you are constructing it you know the resistor that you have to use uh, the resistor you have to use so now now this is power this is um the potential difference power potential difference and you are looking for this what is that formula that connects power electric power electric power is what current times potential difference but if it is electrical energy that's why what i told you one question will give us a solution to many questions energy is current potential difference and time ivt so know the difference power that's why i say energy is what power times time energy electrical energy is power time times time not mechanical energy this time around so if it's electrical energy you can you there will be time there if it, something like this involves time now from here you know that in this question there is no resistance here so we are going to derive it we derive it from the ohm's law which says v equal to ir so we don't have current in this so current equal to the potential difference over resistance we are replacing it here so power equal to Potential difference over resistance times potential difference. We have solved this question with this now. So now what we are looking for is what? Determine the resistance. 
right? So now, what we what, what, what we have is power equal to v square over r. Cross multiply. Power times resistance equal to v square. Because you are making this the subject. Resistance equal to v square over, over power. So we can finish it like this. Oh yeah. What is our v? V is 240. So write 240. Square means 240 times 240 over over power. Power is 60. So now we'll cut. Zero. Cancels zero. Six here. One. Six in 24 is four. So 240 times four. Four times zero. Zero. 4 times 4 is 16. So we carry 1. 4 times 2, 8 plus 1, 9. 960 ohms. Can you see what we've done now? So it's a very simple question. Don't say it's too long. It's just because you don't know the, if you have known the formula, I'll just put it eh, power is V square over R. Then R equal to V square over power. You, you finish it within 15 seconds. This is not, you cannot take you up to 15 seconds. You are through. One of you just chatted me that, ah, you did well, but time, I was not happy. So one other thing you need to learn is, when you are studying speed, it matters. Speed, try to be fast and accurate. Sometimes you, are, you may be trying to be fast, then you make mistakes. So you need to, be, to learn to be fast and as well, accurate, precise. So you practice it. It's not when you enter the examination or you start learning to be fast. No, you start learning to be fast. When you are studying and solving questions yourself, check time. I'm starting by this time. I must make sure I finish this within this time and be accurate. So these are the learning tips. I'm here to give that. I will do that. The time has not been on my side. The only challenge I'm having this period.